Hey, it's Amy from Following Hawks, and I am back today with another property reading. So if you haven't seen a property reading before, what this is, is an intuitive reading where I connect with a particular home or land or even a public place or even a whole city <laughs> and to connect with the spirits of the land in that place. And the spirits of the land can be any number of energies. There could be um, ancestors who lived on the land before. There could be um, trees that want to talk, fairies, uh, all kinds of different types of energies that are present on the land. But I start with tuning in and asking the keeper of the land to come forward and uh, share with me whatever it would like me to know about the location. And then I go in and ask uh, each of the specific questions that the person who requested the reading has for me. And I write everything down. And depending on what I find, there may also be healing work involved. So I will do any kind of healing or energy work before closing the session. So the reading I do by myself so that I can be in communication with the spirits. I make all of the notes and then I'll hop on a Zoom call with the person who suggested the reading and we'll talk all about what I found. So today's reading was submitted by Erin who asked me to take a look at her home and she lives in Chittenago, New York, which is just outside of Syracuse. And Erin says when I asked why did she want to book the reading that she felt like the land has had trauma trauma from when the indigenous people were removed from the land and also more recent trauma as the previous owners did a lot of clear cutting to the old growth trees on the land. She also feels like there's something she's supposed to do here on the land, but can't seem to understand what that is. Uh, when I asked specifically for her to explain specific concerns that she had, she said there's a few interesting places on the property and she's concerned about the energy there. She's also concerned about the indigenous people that are still in the area and on the land, and she wants to make sure that the land knows that they'll no longer hurt it because of what has happened in the more recent past. So she's also got a weird feeling in the house and wants to know if we can figure out what that is and if we can be cleared. So those are Erin's questions and concerns, and I'm going to tune in now and do the reading. And the first thing I always do in a reading is look at the map. When I look at the map of the area, a lot of times intuitive information starts to flow in or I am pointed in certain directions or, or at certain things to look at. And so it's just a good starting point to get an overview of what I'm looking at. So here is the location that Erin has asked me to look at. And the first thing I notice, obviously, is that this is in a very rural and farm oriented community. Um, there is a lot of more natural area and trees and it kind of flows through like this. So I'm guessing there is some kind of um, creek or river or waterway um, that kind of comes by and skirts this area. So as we start zooming out, I can see, again, we're not too far from Syracuse. But really, there are lakes and waterways around. Here is a, a state park that looks like it has some falls, so that might be an important spot in the area. Over here, you have Three Falls Woods. So it looks like there's a lot of different uh, waterways that are probably all kind of headed to this lake right here, which is just directly south of the area. When we zoom out further, again, we see more water, more lakes, and ultimately, We've got Lake Ontario up here, and we've just got a lot of forest land kind of in every direction. So that's just a good overview. I might be prepared for the spirits to want to talk to me about the water in this area because it's so prominent. But other than that, nothing major jumping out at me or trying to get my attention. Okay, so now I'm going to 
prepare to tune in and connect with the spirits of the land in this place. Okay, well, that was an amazing, beautiful reading with so many messages I'm excited to share with Aaron. And I actually had to turn the recording off during the session because the spirits were a little nervous about coming out and talking to me and didn't feel comfortable doing so until I turned the recording off. So I will share all about the messages that I received and the work that I did. So let's go hop on Zoom with Aaron. First of all, let me just say thank you for sharing your beautiful space with me and with everybody else as well. Um, I really enjoyed not only connecting with the spirits there, but it's so, you know, I learn something new every single time. And so it's always fun for me to see what it is they want to share. And there were definitely things that I was like, that's so cool. I didn't know that. So... <laughs> Great. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Well, thank to you. I really appreciate it. I, I, like I said, I emailed you and asked or messaged you on Facebook and asked if you could do a property reading. And you said, I'm not doing them right now, but here are some others. And I went through your list and none of them felt right. I kept getting these hits. No, 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 no. It has to be Amy. It has to be Amy. And then when I saw your email for this, I was like, oh, fun. And then I never <laughs> expected it to come through because I'm like, she probably has like handfuls of them. And then sure enough, when you messaged me, I was like, figures. And I went outside and I was like, really? <laughs> way to make it happen <laughs> they they made the stars align as they tell me that they do they're like when there is a reading that needs to happen or there is some message that needs to get through they will pull all the strings and make all of the alignments so yeah, did it. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you i'm just along for the ride so <laughs> excellent yeah yeah so it was really fun so um what's interesting is while i've been doing these you know publicly I'm recording myself while I'm doing the reading. And so when I started, I had the recording going and I was just sitting and quietly as I do, just waiting kind of for the information to come in. And they were all being so shy. They were like, it was like all these little energies behind the trees and they were all kind of like just peeking out at me, um, but they didn't want to come out until I stopped the recording. So, um, oh. so I stopped the recording and then they were, then they felt comfortable to come out. But I think, I don't think it was just the recording. I think they were a little nervous about mm -hmm. um, kind of talking to me in general, which happens sometimes. Um, or, you know, certain energies will kind of hang back and, and see what's happening. And so once I turned the recording off, it was actually there was a little rabbit that hopped out um, to speak to me. But because it hopped up to my feet, I, you know, in my mind's eye, I sat down with it because it was on the ground. And as soon as I sat down, it shape shifted into a, a Native American man um, right away. And then he welcomed me and said that, I, he was glad that I was there and that he was ready to talk to me. And so um, it was kind of funny. It took them a little bit of time to warm up to me. <laughs> I think that I can, I can understand that though. They, I feel like that's something about this property. I feel like because of some of the human trauma that they've had on here, just my feelings is that they have been shy and we've gone up into the wood property, the wooded property many times and apologized and said, you know, we're here, like, it's okay. You guys are all safe. I don't know. And uh, my kids swear that they've seen fairies and other things up in there before. And um, and felt them around, but not actually like been able to connect with any of them. So I feel like there has been some shyness happening up there. Yeah, I totally get that. Yeah, they were very much kind of just hanging. They wanted to know what was going on, but they <laughs> they they weren't willing to you know run right out and and chat with me. But um, but yeah, once I uh, connected with the gentleman and and asked him what it was he most wanted to show me and most wanted me to see. He actually took me directly to the house right away. And you had mentioned like that there had been some kind of weird vibes in the house or you weren't, you know, totally sure what was going on. And what he actually showed me is that uh, there is a portex, a, 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 a portex, <laughs> a, por a portal <laughs> vortex, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> one of each. <laughs> yeah, one of each. No, they it, actually they said vortex to me at first, and then they said portal. So probably, okay. uh, what did I just call it? A vortex? <laughs> Wasn't probably correct. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's very large, but the energy was uh, slow moving and swirling. It was very um, kind of like a lazy river, right? Like not a super fast energy, but it's large. It covers, and I was trying to look from the, the overhead map because um, it looks like there's a house and maybe like a barn or a shop yeah. or something. There's a Is garage. There? Yeah, the garage. A garage, yeah. So there's two buildings there. And so they were really showing me it covers like where the house and the garage are but like the whole kind of lawn area the whole area that's really exposed that's not wooded that this energy is in this whole large area and that what's happening is that there's earthbound spirits in the area that are drawn to it they said like a magnet it's almost like it's kind of pulling them there and that the the spirits specifically that were there they knew they were looking for a portal so somehow or another it was like they knew they needed to cross over they knew they needed a portal and they were drawn to this portal but it's the wrong portal right so it's um so they're just kind of like stuck milling around and because they're in that area where your house is like you're feeling those energies as well excuse me in the house and so uh really they were just kind of like milling around look, looking for the right portal because you know portals are um, you have to be a frequency match to right. work with them. And so really it's like they they have a key, but they don't have the right key, right? So they're just kind of like stuck milling around while they're trying to figure out where they're supposed to go. So um, what they had me do actually well, was open a portal to um, cross the spirits over. And interestingly, I so I've been working lately um with more of like a bee energy since bees are really known to kind of be these like um guardians to the other worlds mm -hmm. uh so you know in the past I've worked more with like Archangel Michael and those you know types of spirits to do that and that's fine you know there's nothing wrong with that but it is, does have a specific religious connection that the bees don't have and are a lot more um you know free to move through different uh, cosmologies, I guess you could say. So I asked them if they would or open a portal for these spirits, and they actually opened a honeycomb-shaped portal, which was kind of Perfect. fun. <laughs> and um, and they guarded it, and I didn't have to discuss anything with any. All of these spirits knew, like what they were just waiting. They were just waiting for the right portal. <laughs> yep. So, yep. Um, so they moved on through. But I asked, you know, what should we do um, going forward? Because obviously, this is going to be, uh, you know, an ongoing thing that other spirits will be drawn to and so they said it was fine to leave this portal open I kind of put it you know kind of on the edge of the woods area so it was just a little bit out of the way I don't know that it's something that you'll you know detect or feel but um but there's a bee like standing guard with it so it's just yeah. they can kind of catch anybody new that was coming in but that should have cleared the house out and then um I put like kind of a bubble of protective energy around the house with an instruction kind of attached to it to mm -hmm. just say like any of these spirits that kind of bump up against this redirect them to the portal that they're looking for so Perfect. hopefully Perfect. sorry my nose is sorry <laughs> <laughs> um hopefully going forward that will resolve that um that feeling or or that issue but if you come across any of them you can feel free to say hey there's a portal just for you there. <laughs> over there look for the look for the bee in the honeycomb <laughs> the bee is perfect I, I feel like the bee is perfect for us on this property and and our connection with nature and with um and we do want to add bees at some point but they're everywhere because we have so much growing here so they are we, we have to be careful not to step on them all the time because we're always barefoot and we're last year we had a couple of um a couple of issues <laughs> Yeah. Stepping <laughs> but that was perfect perfect energy for um for the portal good thank you good yeah uh, so um so yeah so that was um that was that let me make sure I didn't miss anything from that yeah that was everything related to the to that energy and to what's happening there um once I finished with that I asked the gentleman the keeper of the lamp 
the land if he or any of the other ancestors in the area wanted to uh, come forward and speak to me. And um, a an older woman came to me and immediately showed me like a sweat lodge, like a teepee with a, a you know, that was used for that purpose um, and invited me inside and just wanted me to know that this area was used in that way and it was used for purification. Um, that that was, you know, some of the energy that um, that would be used there. And so it would be a place that you would come to seek guidance from your ancestors and from, from the other side. So uh, they said a place of peaceful reverence. So I don't know if you feel that. Exactly <laughs> what we're, that's exactly what we're trying to create here with our business. So, and the sweat lot is wonderful too. We've been um, contemplating how, the construction of a sweat lodge is going to happen and we know kind of up where it's going to be we still have to my husband's still got to go kind of wander around and feel his spot out so in the next few years a sweat lodge has been projected to be put on the property as well as part of our oh how funny thing. i didn't know that <laughs> yes. well then they're probably showing exactly that like this is what this was used for you were probably tapping into that as well that was certainly um what what it was and so and that was what they said was that the portal that's on the property there um it was opened the indigenous people opened that portal for the purpose and what um what they were showing me was like when you're inside um inside the tent the tb that I could see it as like the big, you know, kind of portal almost on the wall or like up high in the space. And it was like the ancestors would step through it and mm -hmm. sit down and, you know, join um, their family members at the circle or the people who are in the circle can step out into um, these other realms, um, step through the veil, they said. So this was the space where, you know, that was possible for this um exchange of information so Perfect. um and they said it's still an active and protected portal they're still caring for it like the energy is um is still there and they said um the grandmothers tend it and when they told me that then this whole circle of grandmothers came around the fire inside so it was really beautiful nice. <laughs> perfect that sounds perfect <laughs> yeah. so you may encounter them as you, <laughs> you might i'm sure we will and continue working there yeah it was really beautiful um but they said they said they called you and your husband there specifically um because they knew that you would be good stewards of this land and of the energies there um they said it, that has not always been the case in the past right that there hasn't always been good stewards on the land and partially because the energies haven't supported their ability to kind of be in this plane as much. Uh, and that in the last number of years, as energies have become more heightened, uh, I guess you could say in, in this timeline that we're in, it makes it easier for them to kind of go back and forth and to tend this portal and to be here. And so now it's really important to them to have human stewards in addition to them stewarding from Thanks. the um, from the spirit realm. So that was why they wanted you here in this place to be able to work with them and, and do that. Let's see. Oh, well, they did want you to know they, they love drum playing, singing, dancing, anything. <laughs> Although I was like, but you said it was a peaceful place, <laughs> like, but it felt like this was a way to like heighten the energy, right? To like really, um, you know, make that connection and and um, shift the frequency so that it would be easier to uh, connect with the ancestors and and to have that conversation. So if you feel compelled to do any of that, yes, they like it. I've been told a number of times recently. I had an Akashic Records reading a few months ago, and she said, "You need to meditate more, but you need to drum, like drum and meditate in the woods." And I'm like. Oh, there's so many ticks up there. <laughs> I'm like, how do you protect myself from the ticks? And so yes. she gave me this whole thing, protect yourself from the ticks, take your drum and go up there. So, <laughs> so the drumming. They are also encouraging you to play your drum in that case. There's they were showing you the drum playing as well. <laughs> drumming, drumming, I need to do it. I keep saying, you know, I, I'll ask for signs and of something and then 
the, a woodpecker comes. And like the last time I was up meditating in the woods a couple of days ago, I asked a question and a woodpecker came right on this tree next to me and started just, and I'm like, yes, drumming, I get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, yeah, and I'm sure you know that drumming is just such a powerful energy to um, shift our consciousness. And obviously, that's why it's used so much in journeying and in ceremonies. So, um, so yeah, I think, and maybe that's part of it, too, is that because you have such powerful energies that are happening there, like the drumming is really going to facilitate that connection and that um, really accessing those spirits and, the, and those realms. And um yeah because that's they were they said um that you can be a human guardian of the portal and work with it consciously and that you can use it to connect with your own ancestors and to receive guidance and to um make those connections as well and so they had suggested that you create um just in nature somewhere on the property an ancestor altar that you wow. could be adding things to and just for whatever reason this portal is just really connected with the ancestors you know a lot of them are feel more interdimensional or feel more you know like th this one just was really like and that's why they opened it so I'm sure that was that's part of the energies there and so um just super connected to um the ancestors in the other realms so I think having an altar would really um support and welcome welcome those energies and does that have to be anywhere on the property in specific or you know because no just... I asked them if they yeah I said do you show me if there's a spot specifically and they said wherever she likes just but they did say outside so somewhere so it doesn't have to be um I mean leave it to your imagination to for what goes on it but it could be you know natural items that you find or whatever on the property but that you're dedicating to the ancestors or you're sharing with them in that way so um it could be something very uh, natural. On right. the land. That's easy. That's easy enough. We do have a um, nature table in the house, so we could always start collecting that stuff outside and allowing it to be there for that purpose instead of hoarding it in the house. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I love that. I have a little spot sometimes outside. I do the same thing. Like if I find something that feels like, oh, this was a special little thing, like that was given to me i'll add it to the <laughs> kids are always bringing all kinds of random things in the house i so. bet they are <laughs> boys there's rocks and twigs and sticks and stones you name it <laughs> yeah yeah well now you have a spot and just you know right. to, to give it as an offering specifically to the to the ancestors and they would really appreciate that and it would feel um trying to come up with the term but you know uh it would facilitate the communication and, and conversation more connected right yeah yeah um but when I was asking kind of like what else do they want you to do or is there anything you know as as a human guardian um that they wanted and they just said your presence alone will be soothing and healing to this land which you know I hear that a lot and I think we underestimate our the value of our presence in a location because we think like something magical should be happening and it's like something magical is happening we're just not necessarily uh aware of it with our senses right. and so um so they just want want you to know that that you're just being there is healing and and they did ultimately they didn't talk to me about any trauma that wasn't something okay. well they did I'll, I'll share with you. they did talk about the trees um but as far as like the ancestors um you know that wasn't something that they wanted to talk about or seem concerned about and so um I think even just that like doing this work being in connection being on the land like all of that is going to be um healing to the energies there good that's good that's good because I I worried I was wondering about that um pretty much since we we arrived here a couple of years ago because this whole area you know this is kind of where the Iroquois nation was created so all that trauma all that stuff happened in this area and whether or not that was this property proper I don't know you know like where in this area did all that happen so so yeah, that's good. yeah. That's it's interesting sometimes ancestors will they will want to go through the trauma or show right. it to me or whatever um kind of depending on what happened in, in what location but this this felt like it was a fairly protected place and a peaceful place that that was used or that wasn't 
you know, I, I always feel the same. Well, actually, no, in this case, they showed me the portal is right there. So it is there um, in that location. Sometimes it's like, well, it's in the area, but you can, you know, feel the energy in, on your property. But, um, but no, this place, I think they're still tending it. So I think it was a very protected um, location and the energies there felt very friendly and peaceful um to me so and the fact that they didn't want to discuss anything either means that a lot of healing work has probably already been done on their plane um and and on the human human level as well um or again it's just not something that that is needed at this time so no, exactly yeah. they did make one other note that they just said that this this place is a place out of time and that when you're there time might feel a little wonky or different or, you know, faster or slower or something. Just like time isn't quite the same when you're there at the property than it is in other places. So that's why we never want to leave. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. They just said the the time being like that is what helps transition into a liminal space to connect with them. Right. It's kind of like just pulling back a little bit from uh group time <laughs> yes yes I yeah definitely we can we have felt that I think people who come here also um feel that we have we've kind of put I kind of put my own little bubble around the whole property with an intention that only um people with the highest um intentions of love and light can come onto the property and um mm -hmm. When people do come here, it's just so peaceful and so relaxing, and they usually never want to leave. <laughs> they feel it too. <laughs> feel it. They feel it. I love it. I love it. That's the best. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that was everything with the uh, the portal and the ancestors. And the only other spirit that really wanted to step forward, I just asked if any trees wanted to talk mm -hmm. about what had happened there. Um, and I did a very large tree guardian um stepped forward and said that they were very sad about the destruction that had happened um but they wanted to share that it's not just about the destruction of the trees that oftentimes that's the most visible thing but that everything is affected when you know trees are cut like that and that it's uh you know it's plants and it's fungi and it's insects and it's you know the soil and all of these things that are affected but they said, you know, even the weather is affected when changes like that are made. And then they said, even the humans, right? So right. that we, you know, as humans sometimes like to think that we're somehow separate, like, oh, look out there, that's so sad. Um, but they're like, but you're affected too. And things happen to you as a result of, you know, forests being cut in that way um they didn't elaborate on specifics but they just wanted to kind of give us the reminder that we're a part of this ecosystem too and when um when they're hurting we're hurting and um you know I think a lot of us empaths can feel that uh but but obviously not everybody can and that's why it you know continues kind of continues yeah I, I think that was the the biggest kicker for here um we didn't see the course we were living on the other side of the country when we bought the property so and then when my husband did fly out here very briefly to see the property but it was there was like four feet of snow so he couldn't walk up into the woods and um he literally just saw the house and left and then um when we moved here a couple months later we walked into the woods and we both came back like crying in tears and we had counted um you know, some of the rings on some of these, these old trees that they had taken down and, um, and just, you can feel it, you could just feel their pain being in there and then how everything was affected. And now we're trying to decide how much do we clean up? Cause they left a lot of it there, which is again, you know, they took them down, they took out what they could use, I guess, and then left a lot of it there. But I'm sure now there's a lot of animals that have inhabited a lot of the debris, um, and so, and we'd like to kind of clean it up so that we can, you know, um, not as making it aesthetically pleasing, but more so that we can access more of the land so that we can walk through. We have little, you know, walking trails through the woods. And so there were a couple of 
the elder trees out on the other side that I, we can't access right now because of all this debris in the way. And, and I kind of, we feel like the calling to like move the trail over there, but we have to go through all this, you know, this debris to get there. So we're like, how much do we clean up? Do we take it out now that there's probably everybody's living in there now? <laughs> Right. Right. It's like, is that worse or do we just leave it, you know, and let it, let it take its natural course now at this point. So. Yeah. It's interesting. They didn't address that specifically um, as far as cleaning up, but what the picture I'm getting while we're talking is that where the trail goes through, you know, you could cut a tree on either side of the trail, remove just that chunk um, right, right. and move it out of the way so the trail can continue, but without kind of disturbing whatever, you know, decomposition, <laughs> animal right. bug hotel situation has been yeah. created. Yeah, because some of the some of the debris piles are like probably, I don't know, maybe 15 feet thick and oh, wow. oh they made piles. So piles like, like big right heaping piles. Yeah. Yeah, the trees, the big trees will probably just leave or use some of them for firewood, the ones that aren't really being um, put in that are in these big giant piles. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how what, what we feel like. So when we work with the land, um, especially since moving here, it takes us a long time to walk through, talk about it, think about it, feel it, like connect with it and see what, you know, are we getting any vibes? Is anybody, you know, a lot of times my husband will go up there and meditate up there and be like, okay, what's, what, what do we do? What do I do about this? Right. <laughs> you right. Know, what do you want me to do about this? So we, we built a fire pit up there so that we could spend more time up there um, as well. And so, cause we felt drawn, like they wanted us to be up there more, to be mm -hmm. kind of present and with them and um, just, we talk, I talk to the trees all the time, the standing people all the time, every time I walk through there. <laughs> yeah. So, well. Yeah. And they do, I mean, they do want you kind of there and around for sure. And I think, um, yeah, they, they didn't talk to me at all about any kind of cleanup. So I, I feel like you'll be, you'll be guided. <laughs> we'll have, yeah. We'll just have to feel that one through and, and be guided as to, yeah. What, yeah. What, what to do about that because that is tricky and I'm with you I've had some debris piles I've had to move right. and I hate when they have to sit for any period of time because now I know like little creatures have moved in and built a you know the squirrel has a nest in there or what you know like gives me too much anxiety <laughs> so. I know and there's there's like a foxhole behind one of them and I I swear there was a skunk living in one of them at some point and we're like wow well. yeah yeah <laughs> well, well, the creatures <laughs> and the birds love those yeah. love those uh uh wood piles so yeah yeah but um yeah, well, let me uh, look back at my notes here. Oh, so they had said that they are happy you're there to steward the regrowth yes. uh, specifically. And so they said the re this will take a long time and more stewards than just you will be needed, but that you're really the one that is um, beginning the process and anchoring the energy needed to stimulate the regrowth. And I was like, well, explain that to me a little bit. Like, I mean, I get that it kind of in general, but like specifically what is happening when you say, you know, a human is here to stimulate the regrowth. And they said, although nature can accomplish much on its own, there's this special spark that gets generated when the right human is in the right place on the land and that you make it possible for certain species to grow there. And huh. this is this is part that I was like, oh, I didn't know this. I hadn't like, they've never showed this to me before. So the picture, the way they were showing it to me is like, you know, you're on the land and there's light from source, you know, coming down through you and into the land. But in this column of light was like all of these different species so it was like an orchid and a fern and a mushroom and a whatever and it was like the the seeds might be in the ground or the potential of something might be in the ground but that um through anchoring this energy down it was almost like you're um you're anchoring the template of that in there being like 
this is what's needed to grow. And I just thought it was so beautiful, like yet again, another example of how we're a part of this ecosystem and not separate from it. And that sometimes we feel the need to um, like, oh, that place has been, you know, traumatized by humans enough. We should just leave it alone and not touch it. Right. But that our presence alone, it can be very healing and our participation and our stewardship um, is, is very much needed. And I just thought that was such a beautiful example of how these energies are stimulated and, um, and are able to come back after such a trauma. Well, that's so interesting. Cause so, you know, herbalists will say, um, you know, what, what you need the most, the species of plants that you need the most, for your own personal healing will show up in your, on your own property, right? So what you need the most shows up on your own property. And, um, we've been, we've let a lot of things go because we like things a little more wild. We don't really, we don't use a lot of machinery. We have to have a tractor because we have like six acres that need to be mowed. Um, not include that doesn't include the woods, but so we do have a tractor, but when we, for our garden and everything, we, we don't weed whack, we don't use any other machine. We don't have a tiller. It's all done by hand. And, um, we've started noticing different plants popping up. I was like, oh, it hasn't, that's not, that wasn't there the first couple of years. And <laughs> recently I was asking my neighbor down the road, I said, um, I need some stinging nettle for, um, for my medicine bed. Uh, and I know she had mentioned, oh, she had seen some in her woods somewhere. She has water on her property. And so I said, can you dig some up for me? And she's like, I'd love to. So sure enough, she digs some up and I bring it into my greenhouse and it's still sitting in a, in a um, pot in the greenhouse. I hadn't planted it yet. And my husband goes, why did you have stinging nettle come here? And I said, well, because we don't have any. I've been looking for it everywhere. And he goes, we just had some pop up this year. And I'm like, ask and you shall receive. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> Okay, then, you know, and he goes, I don't know where you want to put that because it's all over, over there. And I was like, oh, take me to it. Show me. And sure enough, they're, you know, six, seven feet high. Oh my God. Whole big area over there. And I was like, we well, yeah, that wasn't here. And he's like, no, it wasn't here. I'm like, where did it come from? <laughs> <laughs> I've had that experience many times here as well, where things I'm like, that has not been here before. <laughs> Uh, these random things are popping up all over the place. And, and I said, okay, well, we were sitting up yesterday, um, day before yesterday, discussing this. said, you know, I'd like to just start, instead of having my, you know, buying herbal teas, I'd like to just start pulling stuff from the land. And, and I said, apparently we need plantain because there's piles of it everywhere. <laughs> and thistle, and I'm going around, you know, we're just pointing around closest to the house, all these things that have popped up in like literally the last year um, that weren't here in their abundance when we got here. So I totally, I believe that as this happening through the whole property, there's all, all these things are just, it's just become this, it's, it's, it, we, we like to say it's just more wild, you know, nature can just be itself now and then just do whatever it needs to do. Right. Um, to heal itself as well as if it's medicinal for us, then we can, you know, ask to ask if we can, you know, partake in some of that, that healing medicine as well. So, yeah. so that's good to hear because that's, that's been happening and that was just, just coming up recently. So <laughs> I love that. So they wanted to confirm that <laughs> like, Great. you're, you're, it is happening. That is the, that is, and for me too, like I said, because that's happened so many times here. I'm like, there was never St. John's wort. Where did that come from? There were never <laughs> orchids here. And those can't like, just, they can't just magically grow, right? Yeah. Like they can't, where would they come from? It's not coming from a seed, right? This is so all of these different things that have, have popped up, like the more we are on the land and the more we are actively and consciously engaging the more we see that return to us of like, Ooh, yes, we see you. We know what you need and let us yep. provide it for you. So, Absolutely. and, and I think that also that anchoring in, right. That right. Like, through our presence, it's like, Ooh, this can now come in, this can now come in. And so, um, so yeah, they just wanted you to know, like, just by being there, that's you're you're helping you're that kind of initial, um, steward that's going to, uh, get the, the regrowth. Um, started again yeah 
um yeah the that was the last thing they said they just said the right the right energies for the right seeds come to earth and stimulate the germination so it's like the energy comes down like the 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 seeds may have been there or the mycelium might have been there but it's like that added boost of energy that is like oh this is what we needed to want yep so um so yeah I thought that was really cool so <laughs> thank you for sharing your place with me so that I could learn that as well <laughs> <laughs> it was meant it was meant to be like I said I don't I don't know why <laughs> exactly and I think you know these are this is exactly the um type of thing that I had in mind with sharing these publicly because so many times like these really cool um, bits of information come through but they go to one person and nobody else hears them and so right. in your willingness to share um, share this publicly also means that lots of other people get to um, hear that and experience that as well which right. I, love. <laughs> I love that too and that's, that's kind of I mean and that's part of the Part of the goal that we had for moving here, um, we had um, a business in Oregon. And then when COVID hit, we lost that business and decided we were just kind of like, well, what did we want to do? And so we said, well, always wanted to homestead. So we started looking for property and um, and slow down and slow down, not be wrapped up into the crazy chaos world of business. And so um, and then that's where we were, like I said, we looked everywhere, everywhere, all over the whole country. And we kept being drawn back to this place. And my husband actually came out here to look at a different property. This wasn't the one that we were to look at. It was like a last minute decision. Our realtor was like, oh, this one I just found you want to look at. It. And he's like, sure, why not? So came and went, didn't really think anything of it, but recorded videos for me while he was here when he went back home. And um and when we got here, it was a, such a mess. And we were kind of like, wow, you know, we need to clean this up. We filled a couple dumpsters of garbage from the woods, old car parts. They've probably been throwing garbage up there for generations. Um, and it just keeps, it just keeps, it's like we sit out and we just look around and we're like, wow, this place is so beautiful now that it's all cleaned up and it's, and it's shining now, like before it felt the energy here felt dingy. And then now it just feels like it's glowing. Like there's, there's like, it's, it's, it's growing and glowing. And so part of our, our business that we want to do here is having people come in for that peaceful healing energy to realize that you can access that, you know, you don't have to, what's the right way? So you don't have to like live a nine to five all the time and go crazy and, and hate your job, but you can also find peace working with the land. And so our vision is that we find ourselves and heal ourselves through connecting again with nature. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the motto. That's the motto of our business. Um, and, and so hopefully by the fall, if the business is up and running, we're doing a little bit of remodeling at this time and then bringing people to the land to sweat lodge, to even just take on walking meditations through the woods or, you know, like talking to the trees, <laughs> cause that's what I do, you know, just, right. just take a walk in the woods and, 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 you know, sit, we have this nice big clearing in the woods, just sit and just be in nature and, and see what happens. Cause so many people are so disconnected and there is a big pillar that comes through. It's, it's like, I feel like there's like this one piece in the woods that the trees open and where mostly where they cut, of course, um, a bunch of trees down, but they opened up this space where the energy just, it's just so beautiful. It just comes in. It's like you walk up and it's like, it's like mother nature's arms are going like this, like, well, oh, I love it. Um, and so that's where we created the fire pit. And I think, I think the sweat lodge will go back in that area as well. Cause we'll have to have a fire pit somewhere to, uh, keep the grandfathers to go into the, into the sweat lodge. Um, but so that's the whole purpose of the property is just of our, our purpose was just peace, peace and harmony through nature. And so I feel like the property is doing a really good job at helping us find that. <laughs> <laughs> I think they are. <laughs> They're excited to have you there. <laughs> Great. Great. Yeah. Well, that's beautiful. And thank you for doing that work. And thank you for sharing with your community because it, it really is. I think you're right. Just um, it's remarkable what healing people can find. 
um, just in the simplicity of nature and sometimes just need the opportunity to have that experience and right. um, and know that it's that it's real that it can happen and that it's there and it's there for them they don't have to you know they can go anywhere <laughs> right right but always nice when you can go somewhere special right in your in your own community and not feel like you have to travel so yeah. Well, do you have any other questions or, or anything else? That was, that was you know, I mean, I, I had asked about like, what was my deep connection here? Like, I, I don't know was, if there was like a past as I have, I been here before, like what's, why? Yeah, you know what? They didn't give me any specifics on that. It was more about like, no, they called you here. So probably, you know, in those cases and not that, that you weren't there before, but it, sometimes I feel like you know, if you think of time, all of these timelines happening at the same time, it's like when we're kind of getting closer to something or, you know, that, that that's coming into reality, it's like we're, we're already tapped into that timeline. We can already feel it. So sometimes it feels like I've been here before. I know this. I've done this. There's something familiar about this. And it's really like you were just so tapped into that timeline that was coming closer and closer and closer that you were able you know you were able to feel it um as being very familiar as soon as as soon as you came across it but um but yeah they didn't share with me if it was something like that you had been there before or had another another lifetime there all right I guess that's that then (laughs) perhaps perhaps they will tell you perhaps your ancestors will tell you more well that might be something Right. That might be something else. And so, so when, um, so we don't have to deal anything or with the portal is between the house, like the house and the garage, then that. It's really like, it's like a large area. And, and I never know when I'm looking at those overhead maps, how old they are. Sometimes, you know, people say that that doesn't exist anymore or whatever. But to me, what I was looking at on the map, it was like the two houses. And then there was a big um, grassy area. Um, yep, yep. kind of behind it before the trees and it like fills that whole area including the house um and the garage so because we have a yeah. fire pit right there too we have a fire pit there and so we sit there a lot as well so you already have the the lodge is there in <laughs> in its energetic form and then the fire pit is in the uh in reality so we've we've been making fire pits we've got one more fire pit that we wanted four fire pits to mark not necessarily in each direction but just to mark the significant spaces in one in the woods one by the house we put one down in the garden and one has to go in the locust grove there's we've got this big beautiful locust grove and I always feel like those trees I walk out there and it's got this the most amazing energy and there's some weird circles down there as well so there's some interesting circles where the grass like a perfect circle where the grass is a different color it's like darker than the rest of the grass in the whole grove um and I always say that when I walk in there, they're the guardians because these trees are so big and they're just beautiful. And so I always say they're the guardians of this property because they stand upright. They're like the soldiers, like watching around and looking. That's awesome. Um, so the one like, that came to talk to me was very large, like very, very, large. very large. Yeah. <laughs> I've been one of those, although yeah. I bet you, if it, you know, or we have a lot of old, old oaks and maples as well on here so um but yeah so down there too is another fire we'll put another fire pit in by the end of the summer um but that's always the the energy down there when my people when I walk people in there um one of my friends I she hadn't come to the property before and I had walked her through there and she just stopped and she closed her eyes and stood there and she goes do you feel that I said yeah that's why I took you here she goes whoa and she's looking around. She just starts looking around and she's like, there's like magic in here. And I'm like, I know it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So much, so much cool energy that's been cultivated there for a long time, a long, long time. Absolutely. It's been fun. Well, cool. Well, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's been, yeah, I hope it's helpful and gives you a little bit of direction or which way that the uh or what the spirits are thinking about and I have no doubt as you continue to work there they'll they'll get even more chatty and and want to share their vision with you as well I think so they have their ways of of telling us 
and communicating with us. So they do. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for sharing thanks. your awesome. Thank you. Maybe thank one day you. I'll make it make it out that way and come come experience it. <laughs> yeah, this is central New York. I have to say central New York is gorgeous. So it's like <laughs> perfect. I have another why. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much again and um, have a wonderful rest of your day. You too. Thank you, Amy. Uh, bye. Okay. Bye.